Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my video. This is today's question. It cannot be solved using standard integration, but we are going to use Feynman integral techniques. This trick introduces a new parameters and perform a series of derivative and integral before obtain the final answer. This is a useful yet not difficult trick. You can learn how it works by watching this video. First, we rewrite the Q become function QA where A is a newly introduced parameter. The function QA is almost the same to Q other than the constant 1 over 2 replaced by the new parameter A. Which means when A is equal to 1 over 2, function QA is equal to the question Q. Differentiate function Q over dA which means we have Q' prime A in the left hand side. The integral is for dx while the denominator doesn't have any a, so therefore, the derivative is performed to the numerator only. Here, we use partial differential over dA because we have two variables a and x. Define u equals to natural log of 1 plus a multiplied sine x. Define t equals to 1 plus a sine x. Therefore, dt over dA equals to sine x. Meanwhile, u will be equal to natural log t, while du over dt equals to 1 over t. We know that partial differentiate over dA for natural log 1 plus a sine x is equal to du over dt multiply dt over dA. We have both of them, and therefore we can obtain it is equal to sine x divided by 1 plus a multiply sine x. Replace this to Q prime, we notice that the sine x are cancelled. So now we have Q prime a equals to integral negative pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2, 1 over 1 plus a sine x and then dx. Now we can rewrite the Q prime a into two parts, where both parts having the same integrand. However, the integration bound are different. For part number 1, integration bound is negative pi divided by 2 to 0. For part number 2, the integration bound is 0 to pi divided by 2. Label part number 1 as j. For j, change the x become negative x. Therefore, dx become negative dx. 0 will be still 0. Negative pi divided by 2 become pi divided by 2. Sine x become sine negative x, which is negative sine x. So j becomes integral pi divided by 2 to 0, 1 over 1 minus a sine x multiply negative dx. We can cancel the negative by swapping the integration bound. Put the j back to function q prime a. So now we have a new q prime a where both parts having the same integration bound which is 0 to pi divided by 2. However, for part number 1, the denominator is 1 minus a sine x. Adding up two parts. Therefore, we have the denominator is 1 square minus a square sine square x. While the numerator is 1 plus a sine x plus 1 minus a sine x. The numerator can be simplified become 2. While for denominator, we replace 1 equals to cosine square x plus sine square x. And then, we further simplify by factor the cosine square x from the denominator, which is cosine square x and then multiply 1 plus tangent square x minus a square tangent square x. Define t equals to tangent x, therefore dt over dx equals to secant square x. From here, we obtain dx equals to cosine square x dt. For integration bound in t domain, when x equals to pi divided by 2, t equals to infinity. When x equals to 0, t equals to tangent 0, which is equals to 0. From here, we can see that the cosine square x are cancelled. The new Q prime A is equals to integral 0 to infinity, 2 divided by 1 plus t square minus a square t square dt, which can be rewrite as 2 multiply integral 0 to infinity, 1 divided by square root 1 minus a square, the whole thing power 2, multiply t square plus 1, and then dt. 
the integral of this function is something we use to deal with the inverse tangent which is equals to 2 divided by square root of 1 minus a square and then multiplies inverse tangent of t multiply square root of 1 minus a square for t equals to 0 and infinity which is equals to 2 divided by square root of 1 minus a square multiplied by divided by 2 therefore q prime a is found as pi divided by square root of 1 minus a square and then we can obtain q a by performing integral q prime a da which is equals to integral pi divided by square root of 1 minus a square da equals to pi multiply inverse sine a and then plus a constant c so how do we find the constant c Remember the QA we defined at the beginning of the questions. Let's copy it and put it here. When A equals to 0, the integrands of QA become natural log 1 divided by sine x, which is equal to 0 because natural log 1 is 0. Compared to another QA we found just now, we can notice that C is equal to 0 this is because when a equals to 0, both QA and inverse sine a's are equals to 0. So far, we have two QA. One is the one we just found. And the other one we defined at the beginning of this video. Copy and write them together side by side. The one at the right hand side is actually the question of the video. While the one in the left hand side providing the answer of the questions. In our case, the question gives us a equals to 1 over 2. So that brings us to the conclusion of this video. The final answer equals to pi multiply inverse sine of half, which is equals to pi square divided by 6. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Please continue support, subscribe, give a like and share my video with others. See you tomorrow for another video. Bye-bye.